Hi everyone, we're back uh, at the circuit and this uh, video is to do uh, more measurements to uh, get to the uh, more accurate, uh, uh, I guess, calculations of the uh, performance of the circuit possibly. So um, maybe we can look at the scope shot here. So there's the uh, pulses coming out of the uh, 555 timer and uh, there's the data. So we're at 1.4 kilohertz and the periods are about 7 uh, 12 microseconds there and the duty cycle is adjusted to 5% duty cycle and the uh, pulse width is 36 uh, microseconds alright now what we'll be doing with that pulsing is pulsing 200 volts DC and that 200 volts DC is at this capacitor right there and that capacitor right there is a 330 microfarad capable of handling up to 400 volts. We have on the negative side here a resistor and this resistor is a 22 ohms 5% accuracy resistor and we'll be taking a temperature reading of that resistor and taking a temperature reading of the MOSFET that's switching the circuit. Now if you notice the MOSFET now has no heat sink. I actually removed the heat sink to be able to get a better uh, precision reading of truly the temperature of the MOSFET itself so it's not affected by the ambient uh, room temperature. All right, so that's why there's no heat sink there. The MOSFET is hardly heating at all, and you'll see that from the temperature readings. All right, there's my scope probe there, and that battery at the back there, that's the battery feeding the uh, 555 timer. Okay, now the other thing that I did is I measured that resistor right there uh, with my precision meter. And this is my precision meter there, if you want the model uh, information right there. That is the make and the model. And that meter here has like a 0.6 uh, digit resolution. So I can actually measure things. And what I did is I shorted my probes together and measured what that resistance is there and then measured the resistor there at the front input and uh, deducted what resistance was measured in the uh, shorted leads and that resistor there if my meter is calibrated accurately and I think it is uh, is actually 22.12 ohms now there's a resistor at the back uh, output okay when we when we have the well we're actually always in this video we're always recirculating the flyback or the collapsing inductive uh, kickback all right so the resistor on that side there is also a 22 ohms resistor and from my previous videos what I did I had it down set on this board here but it was somewhat raised but this time I've put it up so that we have a similar uh, situation at the input and out the output to please uh, some people, some critics. And right there, that resistor is 22.38 ohms, measured uh, the same method that I use with the input resistor. All right, so I'll take a temperature reading of that. I'll take a temperature reading of the coil. And let's not forget our diodes at the back. I'll take a temperature reading of that as well. Why not? Okay, so here goes. There is my temperature reader. And let's do the MOSFET. Sorry, here I'm trying to do two things at the same time. Looking at the camera and looking at this here. Let's try to get a temperature reading on the MOSFET there.
to make sure I'm aligned here. Okay, so we're seeing 30.2 is the peak reading that I got off, well, 30.4 right there is the peak reading we're getting off that MOSFET. All right. Now let's take a reading on the uh, resistor there. So it looks like about 31.5 reading on the resistor on the uh, input side and negative side of the uh, circuit. And let's take a reading here of the coil. So 27.9 is about the peak reading off that coil there. Okay, let's take a reading on the resistor on the uh, flyback side. So 108.5 is about the uh, peak reading there. Oh, 108.9 we saw there. Yeah, there's a, there you go, 109. I love that number. 109, very good. It was about the peak reading there. There we go, 109.4 even. All right. Okay, and let's take finally a reading here on our diodes. So I think we saw there about 30 to 31, yeah, there you go, 31.7 is about the peak there. Okay, uh, what else can we do here? All right, the magnet is also, the coil here is also doing work, and I have measured the distance, okay, from the top of the coil here, so you know, adding this plastic here, it all has, right? So from really the top area of the coil to the bottom of the magnet here, that is five eighths of an inch that it's pushing that one pound magnet up, all right? And that magnet is a one inch is one inch high, and. Uh, that dimension there in uh, metric would be 15 millimeters of push, and that's about 500 grams, the magnet weight there. All right, so hopefully uh, with these numbers, we'll be able to uh, come up with uh, some data. I think uh, this is pretty complete, and uh, I hope uh, we uh, get something interesting out of this. Thanks for watching. Bye.